What should we learn from all of this? What a great question to conclude this series called Quarantine Questions. And what your answer might be could be as something simple as, well, I'm going to wash my hands a lot more often for the rest of my life, or I'll never eat a bat, or who knows what yours might be. But I do believe there's some lessons that we're learning through this quarantine. You know, we're celebrating Memorial Day tomorrow. And uh, when I think of Memorial Day, I think of the power of remembering. It's a time when we remember loved ones that have passed away that are dear to us. It's a time when we remember soldiers who gave their all so that we can enjoy the freedoms that we have today. I'm hoping that long after the great quarantine of 2020 is in our history books, that there are things we will remember about the quarantine that stick with us. I believe there are lessons to be learned. And so as we think about this final quarantine question, what should we learn from all of this? It is my hope and prayer that you remember this one important answer to that question, which we will talk about in just a few moments. I've thought a lot about the why, the why question. Why, why are we going through this? What might God's purpose be in the midst of this quarantine? In what way is God redeeming what we're going through for His grand purpose? It basically is another way of asking our quarantine question. What should we learn from all of this? What's the point of all of this? My one big answer I want to give you today is simply this. Be still and know that He is God. Be still and know that He is God. This sentence actually comes straight out of the Old Testament from a psalm written by the psalmist. I want to read that entire psalm to you. It comes from Psalm 46. It says this, starting in verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter, he utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. I'm telling you, that is such a powerful psalm in the midst of our quarantine right now because doesn't it describe in some ways what we've been dealing with? That yes, it seems like kingdoms are tottering, nations are raging. It, it, it feels like suddenly everything has ceased. It, you know, it says there right before he says, be still and know that I am God. I have broken the bow and shattered the spear. I've made all wars to cease. Doesn't it feel that that's what's happened in the midst of this quarantine? God has lived out this psalm right here on planet Earth. I'm blown away at the power of a tiny little microorganism that is officially called SARS-CoV-2, what we've been calling the coronavirus. This small little microorganism, this fast-producing, devious, mean little thing that's so contagious has caused planet Earth to just hit the pause button. Have you seen it? I, I've often had conversations with my wife, Sherry, in the midst of this quarantine, and we will stop and say, if it was not for the quarantine, we would be doing, we would be doing this right now, or we'd be doing this this week. This is what would have been scheduled. My wife is a chorus teacher, and spring is the busiest time of the year for her. It's when there's competitions and final concerts of the year. There, there would have been trips to Kings Island, Pigeon Forge, Chicago, all canceled as, as a part of this quarantine. Um, my wife was going to be directing a musical, The Wizard of Oz. That too got canceled as a result of this quarantine. We talked about all that she would be doing. And then, of course, in church world, Easter happened during the quarantine. And that's one of the busiest times of the year for ministers and churches and church staffs. All the things that go around that. As we thought about all the things we would have been doing if we weren't under a quarantine, I'll be honest with you, I felt a little tired just thinking about it. All the stuff we'd have been do doing, 
we have been running hard and running hard and running hard. You know, uh, the best visual I can think of for what I've personally experienced during this quarantine, it's as if God unplugged my treadmill. This fast moving conveyor belt that I find myself on throughout my life where I'm constantly going and going and going and going. And sometimes I'm not really moving, but I'm going. I'm going through life. I'm doing all the things that we just always do, right? We're always going here, doing that, having these kinds of meetings, uh, making this paycheck, accomplishing these tasks, and then we wash, rinse, and repeat, and we do it over and over and over again. But because of this one tiny microorganism, everything seemed to stop. My treadmill got unplugged, and then now what? They were, we tried to figure out now what do we do with our lives with all of this slowdown, with all of things that we normally do just being canceled. What do we do? How do we adjust? You know, when I look back on these first 11 weeks of the quarantine, I can see some pretty cool things that have happened actually. I've probably started more reading plans on my Bible app than I ever have before. I video chatted with my parents for the first time ever. My life group, we, we met probably more and more consistently than ever during this quarantine using Zoom. And I think about all the dinners I've had actually at the dining room table with my family, time with family. I mean, really good time with family, walks outside, a bike ride with my wife, which hasn't happened maybe in years, maybe decades. These are things that have happened during the quarantine that I'm hoping I'll look back on and remember as a time that I actually slowed down, that God told me to be still and to know Him, to be still and to actually know Him, to seek Him, to talk to Him, to pray to Him, to lean on Him like never before. Well, that's exactly what's happened during this quarantine. And, and I hope that that's what's happened with you. In just a moment, I want to share with you the tale of two sisters, two women, one who refused to be still and one who chose to be still. And it's in looking at their story that perhaps you yourself can find this answer, be still and know that he is God to actually become life changing today and for the rest of your life. There have been times that I have said, we've lost a lot during this quarantine. And that is true. Milestones have had to be celebrated with great creativity, if celebrated at all. People who have had to do funerals during this season have had to do them with such small crowds and so many people not getting the closure they normally would get. There are folks who have lost income, lost the ability to put food on the table in ways that I can't even begin to comprehend. But some of the things that I feel like I've lost, when I start really thinking about it, I wonder if I've really lost that much. And I wonder, even more so, what I've gained as a result of this quarantine. The slowing down, the being with family more, the thinking about and relying upon God like never before. Those are good things. And it reminds me of Martha versus Mary, if you will. <laughs> Martha versus Mary. Well, these aren't prize fighters, but the, this is two sisters who took two different paths when Jesus came into their home. I want to read to you briefly their story in Luke chapter 10, starting in verse 38. It says, Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. When I read this story, I can't help but think of the Brady Bunch episode where it's Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Well, this is Martha, Martha, Martha. Martha is doing all the work. She's taking care of all the needs. She's treating her guests. She's being a wonderful hostess. And there's her sister Mary, sister Mary just sitting at Jesus' feet, taking it all in, having a great time. And so she goes and tells on her, goes up to Jesus and says, will you make her help me around here? I mean, can't you see there's a lot to be done here? And, you know, I wonder if she thought hmm, this is going to be really good. Uh, this wonderful rabbi, perhaps the son of God, going to get onto my sister and get her helping me. But his answer was, she chose what was best. 
Mary chose the best portion. Mary chose the best option. We were faced with the choice of the rat race of life, keeping things going, accomplishing tasks. At the end of the day, what really matters most? Those accomplishments, those tasks that we have checked off, so many of those tasks that rule our days before the quarantine, or those moments where we stopped and we sat at the feet of Jesus and we just soaked him in. We just soaked up life. I'm reminded that some of the best things in life happen slowly. The marinating of meat, for those of you guys who like to grill a good steak or a piece of chicken, you know what I'm talking about. That wonderful grilled piece of meat uh, didn't become wonderful just because of our grilling uh, prowess. It started in the refrigerator as it marinated in those special seasonings and spices. That's when it started. Some of the best things in life happen slowly, carefully. A beautiful sunrise, a beautiful sunset, uh, the beginning of a friendship, the slow growth of this lifelong commitment between a man and a woman called marriage. These things don't happen fast. They happen slowly. They happen with time. In fact, some of the best things in life that I can think of cause us to have to slow down, take it in, and experience it, and savor it. That's what life was meant to be like. And I wonder if one of the great redemptions of this horrible disease called COVID-19 is the fact that God hit the pause button. He did break the bow and shatter the spear and make all wars to cease. And he shook up kingdoms and nations. He spoke and the earth melted. And he says these words to us, be still and know that I am God. Because what's more important than that? You know, Jesus invited us into a different kind of life, and it's so easy to forget that. You know, even pastors like myself, we get so excited and ambitious, and we just want to win the world with the gospel, and we want to lead a great church and lead a great life for others. And when we do this, sometimes we become like Martha, running around like crazy, doing all these things while our souls wilt, because the only way we can become what God wants us to be is to stop and to be still and know that he is God. Jesus in, in John chapter 15 talks about abiding in him, that, that he is the vine and we are the branches and he will bear fruit through us if we just stay in him, be still in him. That takes time. I, I've been watching this rose bush outside of my house that I kind of trimmed down big time uh, before the quarantine, right at the beginning of the quarantine. And I'm looking at it and it still looks so cut down, but slowly over time, some of the browner little branches have, have turned green. And there's this slow process of, of rebirth happening in this rose bush in my front yard. It takes time. It doesn't happen quickly. And that's the way life is. And that's the way God works. If you want to become all that God wants you to become, you must heed the answer to our quarantine question. What lesson do we learn from all this? What do we learn from all of this? I'm hoping and praying that above everything else, you will remember this. Be still and know that He is God. As we close our time together this morning, I want to share with you one more couple of verses from Jesus. He invited people into a different kind of life. And he used this metaphor of a yoke, this giant wooden collar that basically went around two oxen to pull a plow or to pull a, a cart. And they would often attach a young, new ox with a older, experienced ox. They were both yoked together, collared together, pulling that plow, pulling that cart, and the younger would learn from the older. And that's how they did their agriculture back in those days. Jesus says these words in Matthew chapter 11, starting in verse 28. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I love this. And I, I think about this sometimes when I feel like my life in Christ, my life in general is just so hard and so crazy fast. And I'm reminded that Jesus didn't invite us into that kind of life. 
He says, just yoke yourself with me. My burden is, is, is light. It's easy. And, and when Jesus spoke these words, he spoke it uh, to Israelites who were Jewish people, who all they knew was this hard religion led by the Pharisees, where attaining a relationship with God seemed absolutely impossible. There's no way they could do enough to please God enough to find favor with Him. But standing before them was the Son of God Himself, Jesus Christ, saying, Come, come to me, all you who are labor. i got a better life for you. I've got an actual simpler life for you. That's just simply yoke yourself with me and I will lead you. I will guide you. I will cause you to become everything that I created you to become. That doesn't mean it's going to be the easiest life ever where everything you could ever desire or want comes just so easily to you. As I look at the life of the Apostle Paul, that poor guy was shipwrecked and he uh, was persecuted and people didn't understand him. And even sometimes his own fellow Christians gave him a rough way to go. That doesn't sound like an easy life. But Paul said to live is Christ and to die is gain. He was living the Christ life. He was accepting that easy yoke of Jesus, and it was the better way. It is the better way. And you have to choose that because our life, this world in which we live, it goes so fast, so hard. Just remember what pre-quarantine life was like. Perhaps even your current quarantine life is still fast and hard in some ways. But as you think about that, hear the voice of Jesus beckoning you, inviting you to a different kind of life where you simply be still and know that He is God, and you are along for this wonderful ride where He is leading the way, leading you, leading you down His path for your life. And really, the only time that becomes hard is when you try to pull away from that yoke, when He's trying to lead you and guide you this direction. And as long as you try to go against that, well, yeah, that's gonna be hard and painful. But as long as you follow Him in faith, as long as you seek Him, and fight hard to remain sitting at his feet like Mary chose to do. Oh, what an incredible life that is. Friends, as we think about this quarantine season, I know there's going to come a time when it is in the rearview mirror and we look back on it and we wonder what we learned. We wonder how we got through it maybe. And maybe we look at it and say, Phew, glad that's over because I did not like all that social distancing and mask wearing. I didn't like any of that at all. But I'm hoping and I'm praying that you'll be able to look back on the quarantine season and realize that you had your treadmill unplugged too and that God caused you to be still and know Him like never before. And friends, if that has not been your experience, why not let it be your experience today? Every single day, every single moment of every day, Jesus is offering that same invitation. Come unto me. Come unto me, all you who labor and I will give you rest for your soul. Do you need that today? Well, all you have to do is come to Jesus, and I'm gonna give you that opportunity to do that right now as we pray together. Let's pray. Father, in the stillness of this very moment, I come before you, and I thank you for forcing me to be still and know that you are God during this quarantine. Oh Lord, I have grown in you in ways that I never thought I could. I've depended on you in ways that I always should have, but now I have. And so, Father, I thank you so much for that, O oh Lord. Thank you for giving me peace when I needed it most. Thank you for giving me wisdom that I desperately needed, Lord. And Father, Lord, thank you for allowing me to be with my family more than ever before. Thank you for teaching me the lesson of slowing down and acknowledging how you are God. Lord, in this very moment while I'm praying, there might be someone watching or listening right now that has not experienced this knowing you and being still in their life. In this very moment, may they call upon you in prayer and say, God, I want to know you. Will you let me experience the life? Will you help me to become all that you want me to be. Lord, I want to take your yoke upon me. I want to leave my burdens behind and take up your yoke, O oh Lord. Father, for those who are praying a prayer like that right now, help them to know 
that you are going to give them a new kind of life starting today. So Father, thank you for that. May this lesson that we are learning through the quarantine be a lesson we carry with us the rest of our lives. May we, for the rest of our lives, continually choose to be still and know that you are God. And Father, I pray all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Guys, thank you so much for worshiping with us today. And I want to invite you to communicate something with us. If today you took a step of faith, perhaps you prayed and just said, okay, I need to be still and know that he is God. I've really not done that. So that was my prayer today to start doing that. Then let us know that so we can encourage you and pray for you. All you have to do is text us one word to our landline number. Text the word LIFE, L-I-F-E, to our number 859-356-3162. We would love to hear from you so that we can just give you some encouragement because guess what? We are in this together. You do not walk with God alone. There's a whole family of faith, brothers and sisters in Christ, ready to walk with you, ready to be still and know that He is God with you. So let us encourage you by letting us know that you chose life in Christ today. Thanks for worshiping with us today. And let's remember this Memorial Weekend all that God has done for us in order for us to have life in Him. He gave us all, His all through His Son, Jesus Christ. Let's continue to be still and know that He is God.